came to my attention after that last video hit the 15 minute mark that uh, we actually didn't quite finish the problem. Uh, you remember that, I come back over here, we only get a derivative of zero if the top's equal to zero but the bottom's not. So there was actually just one more thing I needed to verify just to be on the safe side. We got pi over four, yikes. We got pi over four and then, hey, five pi over four and add what, another four to that, nine pi over four and so on for everywhere where the top's equal to zero. We just need to make sure, make sure, let's verify that the bottom's not also equal to zero. It's not gonna take that long. We'll say one plus tangent of pi over four. Well, the tangent of pi over four is one. This would be one plus one squared. That's definitely not zero. So we're in good shape. So it we, we just kind of lucked out that we forgot to do it because nobody reminded me, but that's not always gonna be the case, just so you know. All right, so let's look at example eight. Given f of x equals sine x, find the 29th derivative what? Does that mean that I have to find 29 individual derivatives? No, I don't. And the reason why is because, sort of like taking powers of e, the derivatives of sine and cosine, they're, they're cyclical. They just, they keep coming back on themselves, as you'll see right here. So let's just start taking some derivatives and notice, see if we notice some sort of pattern. So there's the original function. Then let's take the first derivative which is cosine x, then the second derivative, which is mm, negative sine x. Now we're not quite back to the beginning yet because this one's negative. Let's take the third derivative. And the third derivative would be a negative cosine x. And the fourth derivative, remember four and everything beyond, you put in parentheses up here as a superscript. Uh, it's negative, negative sign, which makes a positive sign. And notice that we're back to the beginning again. Right, you can keep going with this if you don't believe me. I mean, the next one that we're going to do right here, the fifth derivative is going to be the same thing as just cosine the first derivative. And then the sixth derivative is going to be the same thing as the second. And the seventh... It's going to be the same thing as the third. And we take the derivative of that again. We have the eighth derivative, and it's back, uh, back to where we started. All right, so to kind of generalize this then, this means that, you see, this one would be the, the fourth one, the eighth one. The next time that it's going to happen is when? What, what do we have here? So we have, we just basically have multiples of four going on here. So I can kind of write this as... Whoops, 4 in for the derivative. So if we want to go up to the 29th derivative, all you have to do is find the closest multiple of 4 to 29, and that's going to be 28. So the 28th derivative of sine x should still be sine x. Then we just need to take one more of those derivatives. 29th derivative should be cosine x, and then we're done. So this kind of thing that we just did here for you BC kids is going to come in pretty handy whenever we, at the end of the year, do series like Taylor series and Taylor polynomials.